This video is the third of three videos in a series demonstrating how to account for a note receivable in exchange for services. This video relates to requirement 3 of the Acme Consulting Corporation problem, where, on January 1st, 20Y1, $150,000 in consulting services were performed with payment on a three-year note receivable, and where the market rate of interest was 7.5%. Our requirement here is, assuming the note receivable from Wiley is a zero-interest note, with the principal due at the end of 20Y3. Determine the amount of the annual payment and record the applicable journal entries for all of 20Y1 and December 31, 20Y3. Let's start with determining the annual payment on the note. Since this is a zero interest note receivable, there are no payments that Wiley will make to Acme. The next step is to record the present value of the note based on the implicit rate that Acme must use to account for the note receivable. Using our calculator, we enter 3N for the term 7.5IY, which is the market rate of the note. Then we enter 150,000 as the future value, or FV, representing the principal amount that must be paid on maturity. Enter 0 for the PMT, since there is no payment, and now compute the PV, which should be $120,744. Now, the next thing we want to do is prepare a basic amortization table for the note that on January 1st year 1 will have a beginning balance of $120,744, which is the calculated present value. The interest income is calculated on the balance of the note of $120,744 multiplied by the implicit, or effective interest rate, which is the market rate we use to calculate the PV, or 7.5%. Multiplying 7.5% times 120,744 results in effective interest income of $9,056. Next, we determine the amortization of the principal balance that's the difference between the cash payment of zero and the interest income we just calculated, so zero minus 9,056 is amortization of $9,056. Then to determine the ending balance, we take the previous balance of $120,744 and add $9,056 to end up with a balance of $129,800. Note here we are adding the principal amortization as opposed to subtracting it for requirement 1, because we are building up the carrying value of the note receivable up to the $150,000 that must be paid at maturity. Next, we repeat the process for years 2 and 3 where we end up with a balance at December 31st, 20Y3 of $150,000. You should pause the video here to make sure that you can confirm all of the values in the amortization table. Now on to our journal entries, where we are asked to prepare all of the journal entries for year 1 and the December 31st journal entries in year 3. Starting with the recognition of the note on January 1st year 1, we will debit the note receivable for the present value calculated as $120,744 and credit consulting revenue for the same amount. Note here that we are not recognizing revenue of $150,000, which is the value of the services performed, but rather we recognize the revenue to be the present value of the note receivable. Next, we have an intervening year end at September 30th year 1, where we must record the principal amortization of the note. Therefore, we will debit the note receivable for the prorated portion of the year 1 interest, calculated as 9,056 times 9 out of 12 months, January 1st through September 30th inclusive, which results in interest receivable of $6,792. We will also credit interest income for the same amount. Note that in contrast to the blended payment and interest-only notes in Requirements 1 and 2, there is no interest receivable recorded, only interest income which is directly amortized against the note receivable balance. The next entry in Year 1 is the December 31st entry to record the remaining three months' interest up to December 31st, calculated as 9,056 times 3 out of 12 months, or $2,264. This is recorded with a debit to the note receivable and a credit to interest income. Finally, for the December 31st year 3 entry, 
we will debit the note receivable for the prorated interest income from October 1st through to December 31st inclusive, calculated as $10,465 in year 3 interest, multiplied by 3 out of 12 months, or $2,616. We will credit interest income for the same amount. Note that there would have been an entry on September 30th, 20Y3 for nine months worth of interest income, but we weren't asked to record that entry. The last entry on December 31st, 20Y3 is to record the receipt of the $150,000 principal value of the note, which Wiley must now pay. The payment is recorded with a debit to cash and credit to notes receivable for $150,000. This is the final entry for the zero interest note receivable. We can also observe in this situation that over the three year life of the note receivable, ACME will earn $120,744 in consulting revenue and $29,256 in interest revenue, which totals $150,000.